up to this point, we've been looking at coordinate systems uh, only in the rectangular co Cartesian coordinate system, which is to say that we had our vectors defined in terms of an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate, and we built the vector out of a sum of scalar coefficients multiplied by these constant unit vectors, i, j, and k, that just point down each of the axes. In some cases in geophysics and in other fields of physics and mathematics, it's more convenient to work in a, in a curvilinear coordinate system. For example, in global geophysics, when we're measuring the gravity field of the entire Earth or the magnetic field of the entire Earth, it might be more convenient to work in a coordinate system that matches the globe. We have a distance from the Earth, say a radius, as well as a latitude and a longitude. In this video series, we'll look at the properties of some different curvilinear coordinate systems, namely the cylindrical coordinates and the spherical coordinates. In this video, we'll just look at the basic definition of these two coordinate systems, and in the rest of the sequence, we'll look at some of the implications of those definitions of the coordinates. Looking first at a cylindrical coordinate system, if we define, if we have a vector a here, as we had before in our Cartesian coordinate system, we can define its location in terms of cylindrical coordinates by looking at, say I project that point down to the xy plane, and then take a vector from the origin to that point in the xy plane. And I'll call this distance here r. So that's its distance from the z-axis in a plane parallel to the xy plane. That's what r is. In addition, to specify its location in that plane, I can define an angle here. I'll call that one phi. So you can see that if I actually draw a circle here in the xy plane, it makes the bottom edge of a cylinder. And if I draw the same circular arc around here, now in the xz plane, I project that point down. And then I project a line back parallel to the x-axis to the z-axis. And connect this point up parallel to the y-axis. I can see I have sort of a, a slice of a cylinder. That's why we call it a cylindrical coordinate system. In this coordinate system, the the z component is the same as it would be in a Cartesian coordinate system. However, we have a radius and an angle in the, in the xy plane. We can relate these coordinates to the Cartesian coordinates by looking at uh, the trigonometric relationships between the coordinates. So, if I have an r theta defined, I can get the x-coordinate by taking the radius times the cosine of this angle. So x is r cosine of phi. And then by the same token, y is the sine of that angle. So I can say y is r sine of phi. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the z coordinate in this system is the same as it would be in a Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so that's a cylindrical coordinate system. Another type of coordinate system we might want to work with is a spherical coordinate system. So this is useful in, in global geophysics, as I mentioned. So now let's imagine that uh, I'm plotting a point on the surface of a sphere with a radius of r. So if I just draw the outline of 
the sphere here. This is a circle. Okay, and now I'm going to draw a longitude arc at some point on the circle. So a longitude arc and a dashed line for the part of that arc that's behind the sphere. And now if I have a vector that's on this arc here, so this is again the vector A. Now if I again project down to the xy plane, I'm going to have this vector in the xy plane, and I can draw a latitude arc around at that point. So this is actually the equator of this sphere. And then at this point up here, I have a latitude arc. If, so now A is on the surface of a sphere, and the sphere has a radius of R, so I'm going to call this line right here, its length is R. As in the cylindrical coordinate system, I'll define the longitude here as an angle phi measured uh, counterclockwise from the x-axis if I'm looking down from above. And then the latitude I'll define as a third angle, a second angle, and I'll call it theta. And that's measured relative to the z-axis. So if you think back to uh, one of our earliest videos on the basics of vectors, this theta here is the direction cosine in the z direction because it's the angle relative to the z axis of this vector a. Okay, so in this coordinate system, we can again write the relationship between the Cartesian coordinates and the uh, spherical polar coordinates. So for the x coordinate, We have this line R, and if we project that down to the xy plane, that's going to be R sine of theta, theta being our latitude angle. And then as in the cylindrical coordinate system, we can get our x component by projecting that one back to the x-axis. So again, we're going to have cosine of phi. In the same way, we can get the y com component in the Cartesian coordinates by taking r sine theta So this part here, r sine theta, is the same as r defined in the cylindrical coordinate system. And then to get the y component, we take sine of phi. Here the z coordinate is also a function of position, unlike in the cylindrical coordinate system. Uh, the z component is now going to be r cosine of theta. Okay, so that gives you the basic definition of the two most commonly used curvilinear coordinate systems, the cylindrical and the spherical coordinate system. So in the next video, we'll take a look at what we call the scale factors for these coordinate systems, and those have implications when it comes to taking derivatives and integrals in these coordinate systems.